वेलकम टू उकली मार्केट राउंड आप आई एम सागर नंदी चीफ एनालिस्ट एंड ट्रेडर एट सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट बेस्ट इन सिंगापुर बिफोर आई बिगिन लेट मी गो थ्रू द स्टैंडर्ड डिस्क्लेमर दिस डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन इज फॉर एजुकेशनल पार्पासेस ओनली इट इज डिजाइन टू शेयर इनफरमेशन ऑन सुपीरियर प्रॉफिट ट्रेडिंग सिस्टेम द इनफरमेशन प्रेजेंटेड हियर शुड ओनली बी यूज बाई पीपल who are aware of the risk inherent in trading past performance is no guarantee of future return superior profit is not an investment advisor this session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience as usual in today's topics I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. In general, when swing trading stocks, I like to align the trades in the direction of the market. I will study market direction using Nasdaq and NYSE market break and technical analysis of market ETFs. Along with aligning the trades with markets direction, I like to align them with sector and industry strength. I'll study that using scorecards. During the session, I will try to identify potential trades for the coming week. You may also visit our traders forum accessible from our homepage where I regularly share 360 degrees live analysis of stocks that was the last slide of the presentation let's move to live system i begin the commodities analysis with oil i am analyzing the oil etf uso using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template together i call this at a glance template because this helps me decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds in the weekly chart oil is inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory trend line at the top support memory trend line at the bottom This week's candle color backdrop candle color is remaining bearish magenta the shape is indecisive in the daily also price is inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory and support memory at the very bottom it displayed a bullish headwind from where price went up at the very top it displayed a bearish headwind from where price fell now it is inside a triangle pattern near the center of the triangle pattern this is not an area where i like to take any swing trade if oil comes to the resistance memory and then tilts down from there then i may look for a shorting opportunity on the other hand if oil comes to the memory support line and reverts up from there at that point i may look for a buy setup right now there is no trade setup in oil gold etf gld earlier gold went up strongly at that time the weekly backdrop candle color was bullish after that for the last 3 weeks the backdrop candle color has turned neutral yellow i mentioned in past several webinars that gold is moving in a down up down up fashion with significant gap up moves and gap down moves that is not 
a situation where I like to take swing trades. I am continuing with the same view. I will stay away from taking any swing trade in gold right now. Market trade analysis using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index. Weekly charts along with three pairs of internals, new high low, advanced decline and up down volume. I had mentioned earlier about the bearish headwind signals that came both in NASDAQ and NYSE. When the bearish headwind signal comes, I am always careful because they often come before a downturn. This happened once again both for NASDAQ and NYSE. The bearish headwind came two weeks ago and this week the market dropped significantly. Looking to the left as I pointed earlier there was a bearish headwind in the NASDAQ composite index at the same price level. That bearish headwind created a watermark resistance level. Price tried to go above that but now it has come back below the resistance level creating a false upside breakout. There is a memory support nearby in NASDAQ. If price comes to that memory support and reverses up from there, then you may look for a buying opportunity. Maybe in one of the NASDAQ stocks. On the other hand, if that memory support is broken, then you may be even more careful about protecting profit in your existing long positions. If you look at the NYSE chart, then you will notice that NYSE has already broken below the memory support line. Both NASDAQ and NYSE backdrop weekly candle color has turned magenta, that is bearish. What about the internals? The internals is clearly bearish. All the six internals decline and all of them closed below zero. The market spread is bearish. Let's see how the market ETFs are looking. S&P 500 ETF SPY in previous webinars, I had noted the bearish headwind that came in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart. The bearish headwind appeared again this week and it started appearing early in the week. Looking at that, all Q traders would be cautious and they would protect the profit in existing long positions. They would probably get stopped out somewhere here in the daily chart and would not have to suffer the erosion of profit due to the significant price drops in the last three days of the week. This week ended with a bearish shape and bearish color candle. There is a memory support nearby. Daily also has a memory support, not very far from Friday's close. If price comes to the memory support and reverses up from there, then you may look for a buying opportunity, either in SPY or probably even better in one of the constituent stocks that is fundamentally strong. On the other hand, if this memory support is broken, then you may be even more careful about any existing long position. After many weeks, this week's volume increased and we can see from the daily chart last three days had very high volume, bearish volume, 
we know that it was bearish volume from the red color of the volume bars. SPY is not in an uptrend anymore. It created a lower low. At the same time, it is still maintaining the higher high. We don't have any trade setup in SPY right now. If SPY can go up little bit and then tilts down again, giving a magenta color candle, that will signal a go with flow trend following short trade setup. In fact, that will be the first such short trade setup that will come after this long uptrend. QQQ, not very different from SPY. It also displayed a bearish headwind in the weekly and daily and soon after that price drop. The weekly backdrop candle color is bearish, shape is also bearish. The memory support is further away than it was in SPY. The daily memory support is also significant distance away. It has created a lower low therefore QQQ is also not in an uptrend right now. If QQQ can go up little bit and then tilt down gives us a magenta color candle that will signal the first trend following short trade setup after this long uptrend. Right now there is no trade setup in QQQ. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA here also the weekly backdrop candle color is bearish shape is bearish there is a memory support in weekly however some distance away the daily memory support is also some distance away from Friday's low or from Friday's close DIA also made a lower low Therefore, it is not in an uptrend anymore. Right now, there is no trade setup. If price goes up little bit and tilts down, then like QQQ and SPY, DIA will also give the first trend following short trade setup after this long uptrend. Russell 2000 ETF IWM this was the weakest of the four market ETFs I study. It is continuing to be so. It was inside a triangle pattern earlier. During the week, it tried to go up. At that time in the market meeting, live market meeting, I had mentioned that we need to wait to see if it can actually close above the memory resistance. It couldn't. It in fact broke below the memory support. The weekly backdrop candle color and shape both are bearish. In the daily also it has broken below this memory support. There is no other memory support nearby. Friday's candle color is bearish. However, it has a long lower tail. That is not bearish. The candle shape is mixed on Friday. It has solid body that is bearish. However, it has long lower tail that is bullish. Therefore, as a whole, the candle shape is mixed. If price can go up little bit and then tilt down, then like the other market ETFs, IWM will also give a trend following short trade setup. Right now, there is no trade setup in IWM. The market breadth and market ETFs both were bearish. What about the sectors? Here I am looking at the 11 sectors across last 5 days. Red bar, previous 5 days, green bar and 2 weeks before that, blue bars. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up any bar to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. One week ago most of the sectors went up 
and they went up with significant percentages. This week they all reversed. Most of the sectors went down and they went down with even bigger percentages. Only one sector went up by a small percentage that is utilities, a defensive sector. Market shifted from being bullish to bearish in a single way. Here is another look at the sector performance using sector scorecard and heat map. Here I am looking at the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, etc. Using the scorecard, I can see which sectors are now relatively stronger now, utilities and real estate, defensive sectors, and which ones are weaker, consumer discretionary materials, information technology, all are non-defensive sectors. Non-defensive sectors being the weakest shows that the market is not strong. This sector scorecard and heat map also shows me which sectors were strong earlier like infotech and now becoming weak. They often give the most lucrative shorting opportunities. From the pace column I can see which sectors are accelerating and which ones are decelerating. Science shows acceleration. Energy is actually accelerating now. It was weak for a long time. Whereas infotech is decelerating, it is the most decelerating sector. It was one of the strongest sectors earlier. This shows that if you are going to look for a buying opportunity, you may look for them in utilities or real estate based on strength relative strength or in energy based on acceleration. If you are looking for a shorting opportunity, you may look for them in consumer discretionary and materials based on weakness or information technology based on deceleration. However, sector level is quite broad. To make more accurate trading decisions, you may drill down into the industry level and buy into strength, short into weakness. That is the general approach I follow. If you look at the performance of the sectors over recent review periods, you can see that over two month period, 10 sectors are up, one is down over one month, two are up. 9 are down over 10 days, 3 up, 8 down and over 5 days this week, 2 up, 9 down. That is also showing the gradual deterioration in strength of the market. When that happens, I will look for more shorting opportunities than buying opportunities, thereby aligning my trades with the market's direction. In fact, while this sector weakness was becoming apparent last few weeks, I started to share possible shorting opportunities in the traders forum. Let me review some of them. You may access the traders forum from the forum menu on our website. The forum has multiple categories. QUSA Traders Club is open to the Q systems traders. They can share trade ideas with each other. And I tend to share regular stock analysis in the 360 degrees stock analysis category. AMD was one such analysis that I had shared 16 days ago on 18th July. At that time, many people were probably bullish on AMD. However, I looked at the Q charts. At that time, the weekly was displaying a bearish headwind signal and it was creating a false upside breakout at the long-term watermark resistance level. 
Daily was also creating a false upside breakout at the watermark resistance and it also displayed the bearish reversal signal. That is when I shared my bearish view on AMD. Let's have a look at the stock as of today. This is the live chart of AMD. I shared the bearish analysis on this day. After that price tried to go up a little bit, however it didn't touch the stop which would be above the recent high of the day when I shared the trade idea. It displayed another bearish headwind and from there dropped sharply. By Friday it covered more than risk distance. It went below the lower boundary level. That was the initial profit target for the short trade. Here is another trade idea that I shared in the traders forum. This was on Hewlett Packard Enterprise HPE. I shared it 11 days ago. I analyzed it to be a breakout short candidate. At that time in the weekly chart, price was going down following the resistance memory line. As of that time, the weekly backdrop color was bearish, shape was also bearish and daily broke below the memory support. It came out of the triangle pattern and daily gave a very bearish shape, bearish color candle. Let's have a look at HPE as of today. HPE as of Friday's close. I shared the breakout short candidate on this day. After that price went sideways for a few days. It couldn't go above the memory resistance lines. Instead it dropped heavily on Friday. It closed much below the lower boundary level. That was the initial profit target and this trade could also exit with profit. Did you notice that I shared multiple short trade ideas? AMD I shared 16 days ago, HPE 11 days ago and there were other shorting ideas probably in the traders forum. I shared them while people were mostly bullish on the market. How could I do that? If we look at the SPY chart, looking back I could identify the shorting opportunities while market was at the very top. That's why those turned out to be very lucrative short trades. How could I identify the short ideas while most other traders were bullish on the market? I used the top-down analysis, the gradual weakening of the sectors, some anomaly in the market breadth analysis and also the unique bearish headwind signal that I use to anticipate possible market drop. You may follow my Twitter page and also join the traders forum to get alerts on any stock analysis that I am sharing. Would you like to share a trade idea that is there right now? I tend to use 360 degrees analysis that is align the industry sector strength or weakness, fundamental strength or weakness and technical strength or weakness together. As the market is looking bearish, let me look for a shorting idea. Energy sector was weak for a long time. Over five days, it is showing acceleration, however, it dropped again and we saw earlier that oil also dropped. I mentioned in earlier webinars that energy sector was weak for a long time therefore the best shorting opportunities might have passed. That means 
many of the energy sector stocks are not at a high price level. They may still give us short setups, however, may not be as lucrative as catching the top. That is the general idea. But not every energy sector stock drop. And if they are starting to drop now, those may give very lucrative shorting opportunities. Which energy industry to target? I drill down into the sector. Oil and gas, storage and transportation. You can see this industry in the energy sector was relatively stronger. That means the stocks in this industry might not have dropped as much as in other energy industries. Those stocks may be starting to drop now. How can I know that? I know that from the base one day column, the industry decelerated heavily. In fact, among the energy sector industries, this industry decelerated most on Friday. Therefore, as of Friday's close, we may have some shorting the top opportunity in some stock in this industry. I identified such a setup in KMI. Let me check KMI's fundamentals first. KMI is Kinder Morgan. It makes money, also pays a decent dividend of 4.95%. When I assess stocks fundamentals, I look for either valuation or earnings growth. The magenta color here is showing that it is overvalued. Earnings growth is steady, positive. Therefore, it is not weak in terms of earnings growth, but the stock is already overvalued. Could there be a shorting opportunity? For that, I look at the technical charts. KMI using weekly, daily at a glance template. In the weekly, price tried to go up but then moved sideways for several weeks and it is dropping for three weeks in a row. This week's backdrop color is magenta bearish. The shape is also bearish. In the daily, interestingly, remember the bearish headwind signal. The bearish headwind appeared at the very top. Price could never go above that since then. It created lower highs and started to drop. This was earnings day. That time price opened with a gap down but recovered. After that for several days it tried to go up but couldn't create a higher high. That means though I saw that earnings growth is steady. The earnings result was not strong enough for the stock to make a new higher high. Instead, it made a lower high and as of Friday, it broke below multiple memory trend line support. Friday's candle color is bearish magenta and the shape is also bearish. On Friday, price dropped with extreme bearish pressure and the pendulum or price extreme band indicator is showing that it is at price extreme high. Therefore, as of Friday, KMI is giving a shorting the top opportunity with a breakout trade setup. The stock is overvalued. Earnings growth is steady. However, as I explained, the last earnings result was not enough for the stock to make a new higher high instead it made a lower high. The industry was one of the strongest in energy sector but now it is decelerating. That matches all the criteria that I use for a 360 degree straight setup. 
industry is decelerating stock is overvalued and technically the stock is breaking below major support that is memory support with extreme bearish pressure in fact as of friday it gave the first possible trend following short trade setup in the stock let me summarize the market was bullish for a long time now it is looking bearish market breadth is bearish market etfs are also bearish none of the four market etfs that i study are in a confirmed uptrend at present sectors are bearish in this market it may be easier to make profit from short trades and if you are holding long positions you may be cautious i shared several short trade ideas in our traders forum like amd hpe and others all of which exited with lucrative profits whatever be the market condition using the top down 360 degrees analysis where you align the forces from the market sector industry fundamental and technical level with your trade you can always find low risk high probability trade setups that is all for today thank you for attending I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.